What's good sports gamers and today I'll be going over with you what all the defensive settings in NBA 2K19 mean and the ones I favor. So your defense can be out there looking like one of the best coaches in the league, Brett Brown. <laughs> so alright, let's get it. Now before we start anything, you want to make sure to go into your game plan, then coach settings, and make sure your adaptive coaching engine is on. First we'll start off with on ball pressure. On ball pressure as it says determines how much room the computer controlled defender will give to the ball handler. So this will only come into play when you're about that off ball life and with how the computer defends in one on one situations, I don't really blame you. It's instantly noticeable the on ball pressure the defender will be applying by seeing where he is in relation to the three point line as you come up the court. On gap and moderate look how Murray is parked below the three point line as I come up. Now here he is on tight and you can see he's coming closer to the three point line. And then on smother he's now above it. So you can see how this can come in handy against ball handlers like Ben Simmons it's better to set up shop deeper inside the paint as he's not really a threat from outside. So you want to be better positioned for a drive. And against a Steph Curry who as soon as he crosses half court he can launch so the higher pressures work here. But obviously not every three point shooter is created equal. Steph Curry can beat you off the dribble while Robert Covington is strictly a catch and shoot guy. So tight and smother should be used strategically. For the deep threats who can also beat a guy off the dribble tight is your play. While the guys you aren't afraid will beat you off the dribble, smother it is. As the ball handler goes side to side, you can see the defender try to keep a consistent depth based on what you set. Gap and moderate maintains a good distance. While tight and ultimately smother will begin to bump you and go for steals and such as you move sideways. Now I'm going to go over your on ball screen setting as I always like these to match. If you're playing tight or smother on the ball handler, I put this on over so the defender goes over the screen so he doesn't give up that much distance. If you're playing tight on Steph Curry and they run a pick and roll, you want to stay with him as much as possible so over will do. You can let the CPU do this for yourself and for the non-dribbling player it doesn't hurt to go over either as they're less likely of a threat to beat you off the dribble anyways. And for the guys more likely to drive on you going under to meet them on the other side of the screen is ideal. Now you want this setting to be the same for both on ball screen and on ball screen center. Now for hedge and hedge center, like last year I put both on catch hedge by default with some adjustments. As most of the time we want to keep our big down low playing the roll man and the ball handler and force him to shoot a mid range shot or else the big can play both at the same time if you're not careful. While our on ball defender fights over the screen to take away the jumper of a good shooter or under to force a bad shooter into one. Now when a screen guy can shoot and they run a pick and roll, that's not ideal as your big is parked in the paint while the screen guy is wide open around the perimeter. So that's when you want to utilize soft hedge in your pick and roll coverage on the position they pick and pop the most with. So if they're running a pick and pop constantly with Embiid, you want to go to head center and set it to soft hedge. Now if it's with a power forward, you want to go to your regular head settings and you're good. The screener's defender will jump out and block the path of the ball handler to give you time to get around while he can slide over to the screen guy waiting for the fade. But what if you're in soft hedge and they roll to the hoop? Well that's when you want to get used to controlling the hedge man when he pops out to block the screen so you can then quickly adjust yourself to what the other guy does. For off ball pressure I play everybody at moderate so that's about average depth. Then adjust accordingly and put any guy who can beat me from the outside on tight by going into their individual setting. On tight along with our help rules they're going to stay glued to their man while anybody on moderate or below will be able to help off. So be sure who you have on which as that will be the difference between sticking to your man on the drive and leaving Kevin Durant wide open in the corner. For force direction like every year you want to force everything baseline as it's harder for the ball handler and the offense to hurt you when they're being funneled towards the sidelines. For stay attached you put this on no. And next is double team perimeter and double team post. You always want to keep these on manual so you can double team when you feel like it. You don't want any surprises. For switch rules this allows you to be better prepared to defend off ball screens. Switch all does what it says and no matter the positions involved in the screen your team will switch it. 
Now, this is super valuable if you have the players to do it, like a Boston Celtics, who could throw out Irvin, Brown, Hayward, Tatum, and Horford. There isn't a matchup you're uncomfortable allowing in the switch to prevent the off-ball action with this roster. Switch bigs is pointless, don't even try that. But the one more teams are suited for than switch all is switch guards, which will switch every guard to guard screen. Now if your point guard is Isaiah Thomas, this might not be too cool to do, but just going off the top of my head, players like Rubio and Mitchell or the Nuggets, Murray and Harris, you wouldn't mind. But in general, this creates the least trouble for your defense and I will put your setting on this unless your roster is, like I said, the Celtics or the Warriors-esque and switch all makes more sense. You see here the Celtics try to run an off-ball screen with Jalen Brown who's listed as shooting guard and Kyrie obviously is the point guard. So this falls under the guard to guard switch rules. And you see Chris Paul and Harden switch assignments and end up blowing up the play. If we didn't switch that there's a 100% chance Kyrie is wide open in the corner. And here's another one with the same action. This time Kyrie opts for the corner three and because of the switch Harden gets a good contest and Kyrie misses. Now you see here because this is an off-ball screen being run by Marcus Smart and Morris, which isn't a guard-to-guard -guard screen, they don't switch and what they do falls under what I have for my next setting, which is off-ball screen. For off-ball screen, I waited till I did the switch rule so it makes sense how these work together. If you pick switch bigs or switch guards, then this setting will deal with everybody else on your team. So if you switch all guard-to-guard -guard screens, Guards and bigs and big to big screens will follow what you put here like the last clip I showed you with Smart and Morris. And that's the reason he went over because I have it set for everybody else on my team to go over off ball screens. And the same if you have switch bigs then bigs and guards and guard to guards will follow this. Now if you have your switch rules to switch all put it here as well. For pre-rotate you want to set this to no globally. This is for guys who like to go one on one a lot and you counter by packing that side of the court with an extra defender to be in better position if they drive. But as a result, it leaves the guy open on the weak side. I feel it's a lot more trouble than it's worth, especially against human opponents who can see the whole court. Now for screen help rules and drive help rules, you want both of these on help and no rotation. Because if you look at the play art for automatic, the help defender comes over, then another defender comes over to help pick up their guy. And usually that ends up with a defender leaving a guy wide open for three which as you can see in the play art, and we don't want that. So helping no rotation is the way to go. It will mainly be guys you are guarding moderate gap or leave them that would help. So if you're tight on JJ Redick, they won't leave him just because you have help and no rotation. You have to put the player in position to help by the setting his off ball pressure is on. And lastly for extend pressure, I like to mix this in in the beginning of the game against human opponents. If I have like a crazy good defender like Pat Bev, Kawhi or somebody on that level and I'll match them up with the point guard just to see how they will react and if I can get a couple steals or not. You have to go on to the player's individual tab in the defensive settings to set this and where you can put the defender you want on that player as well. Now these aren't the be all end all settings for the game but these are the ones that I've had the most success with and I will make another video if I found a better method to defend against pick and rolls or off ball or something. The key though is you just want to take away what your opponent does best and force them into some other stuff. I remember reading somebody say Bill Belichick forces his opponents to play left handed aka he doesn't let them do what's most comfortable. Don't let them use their good stuff. One reason I didn't mention switching on ball screens is I used to switch every on ball pick and roll for a minute. But the more I did it I felt it was better to switch if I had the players to do it off ball. But I may go back to it and mix in some other stuff to see if I fare better. And some teams better than others are just a nightmare to defend and they will beat your settings with like hitting contested shots and stuff. Like I mentioned with the Celtics, a five out Al Horford Kyrie or Al Horford Tatum pick and roll, how are you going to defend that? Maybe the best you could do is end up with a Kyrie Irving one on one against your big or something. You can't help from the outside and Horford can shoot himself, so what, what, what you going to do? In 2K, if your opponent knows what they're doing on offense, you will know how much it sucks when their weakest shooting threat can still go five from eight from the outside. But luckily, not all teams are like that. Most have two, three if you're lucky guys who can go off from deep, so no worries. And we see how having a nine shooter on the court can affect offensive production in real life. My Sixers had the nerve to have Ben Simmons, Fultz, and McConnell on the court at the same time. And people were shocked Rozier was able to come over and easily block and beat shot. So you must have them settings right like the real life Celtics did to not let them get away with having somebody with below 80 open three parked around the perimeter. 
But all right, sports gamers. Hope this video was able to help you out. And let us know down below how you like to handle certain situations. How do you deal with the pick and roll usually or off ball screens? Do you use or play off ball? And if you like the video, stay tuned here at Sports Gamers Online for more NBA 2K19 content. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't. And once you're with us, hit that bell icon at the bottom so you don't miss anything we put out. I'm Chris. Thank y'all for watching. Have a good y'all.